Imagine being in a world where the ordinary things we know today have a surprising past. This journey brings us back to the cradle of Western civilization, ancient Greece, a place that, aside from its philosophical and political contributions, also had a delectable palate. And a perfect example of this culinary prowess is something you might not expect, the humble cheesecake. Believe it or not, the earliest iteration of cheesecake didn't come from a trendy bakery in New York or a quaint cafe in Paris. No, it was birthed in the vibrant culture of ancient Greece, where it was considered a source of energy, and yes, even served to athletes at the first Olympic Games. A far cry from our modern indulgence, wouldn't you say? Now this wasn't your typical cheesecake, it was a simple, wholesome creation of flour, wheat, honey and cheese. The Greeks believed in the nourishing power of these ingredients, and the cheesecake was a testament to that belief. The recipe for this early cheesecake was even written in a form of a poem. It goes something like this. Pound the cheese until it is a smooth paste, mix the cheese in a brass pan with honey and spring wheat flour, heat the cheesecake hoe cake on a hot brick. A poetic recipe for a humble dish, wouldn't you agree? The Romans later discovered this Greek delicacy, added their twist with crushed cheese and eggs, and spread it across Europe. Over centuries each region added its flavor, leading to the diverse range of cheesecakes we have today. From the rich and creamy New York style to the light and fluffy Japanese version, it's fascinating to trace their roots back to ancient Greece. So, the next time you enjoy a slice of cheesecake, remember, you're partaking in a dessert with a history as rich as its flavor. A history that takes us back to the first Olympic Games, to a poem etched in time to the unexpected origins of a beloved dessert. Ancient Greece was not just about philosophy and theater, it was also a hub of incredible inventions. And among these inventions, one that stands out is the world's first vending machine. Yes, you heard it right. The concept of vending machines isn't a product of the 20th century, but dates back to the first century Greece. This pioneering vending machine was the brainchild of Hero of Alexandria. Now Hero was not just an average Joe, he was an eminent engineer and mathematician. His works in the field of pneumatics, mechanics and geometry are still cherished, but one invention that truly shows his ingenuity is this vending machine. But what did this ancient vending machine dispense? It wasn't candies, chips, or cans of soda, it was something, well, a bit more divine. This vending machine was designed to dispense holy water in the temples of Greece. Here's how it worked. When a coin was dropped into a slot on the top of the machine, it fell onto a pan attached to a lever. The weight of the coin would tilt the pan, causing the lever to open a valve that let out a stream of holy water. Once the pan was empty, it would tilt back, closing the valve. It was a simple, yet effective mechanism, and it ensured that the temple's holy water was distributed fairly and not overused. Just imagine in the midst of the grandeur of ancient Greek temples, among the statues of gods and goddesses, there existed a vending machine, a testament to human ingenuity and the advanced thinking of the time. It's fascinating to think that the concept of convenience at a coin's drop existed even in those times. As we fast forward to the present, we see vending machines at every corner dispensing everything from drinks, snacks, to even electronics. This ubiquitous machine, which we often take for granted, has its roots in the ancient world. From holy water dispensers to soda and snack machines, the evolution of vending machines has indeed come a long way. Beauty standards have changed over time, but nothing compares to the unique beauty trends of ancient Greece. Now, when we think of beauty norms, we often imagine a perfectly symmetrical face, high cheekbones, a chiseled jawline, and so on. But let's take a trip back to ancient Greece where the concept of beauty was quite different. In fact, it was a place where unibrows were not only accepted but also celebrated. Yes, you heard that right. The unibrow, often seen as a beauty blunder today, was once a symbol of intelligence and beauty, especially among women. In the society of ancient Greece, a woman with a unibrow was considered to be attractive and desirable. The unibrow, or cynophrase as it was known, was a sign of a sharp mind and a striking personality. It was believed to be a clear indication of a woman's intellect and wisdom. And so, the unibrow became a coveted beauty feature, an asset that was cherished and flaunted with pride. But what about those who weren't naturally blessed with a unibrow? Well, the Greeks had a solution for that too. Women who didn't have a unibrow would often use makeup to create the illusion of one. They would use dark-colored substances like powdered minerals and soot to fill in the space between their brows. With careful application, they could convincingly fake a unibrow and thus, conform to the beauty standards of their time. This practice of enhancing or faking a unibrow was so prevalent that it even found its way into Greek art and literature. 
Many of the women depicted in Greek sculptures and paintings can be seen sporting a prominent unibrow. It's fascinating, isn't it, how beauty standards evolve and change over time shaped by cultural, social, and historical contexts. What we see as a flaw today was once a sign of beauty and intelligence. The ancient Greeks had their own unique perception of beauty, one that challenges our modern-day norms and encourages us to question and redefine our own standards. So, if you're stressing over a unibrow, remember, in ancient Greece, you would have been the epitome of beauty. Let's delve into the mystical side of ancient Greece now. There's a story that has intrigued historians and scholars alike for ages, the story of the Oracle of Delphi. Now imagine a time when a woman was considered the most powerful in Greece. Yes, you heard it right. In a society that was predominantly patriarchal, this is indeed a surprising fact. But who was this woman? Well, she was none other than the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle of Delphi was a high priestess at the Temple of Apollo, a place of great religious significance in ancient Greece. But she was not just any priestess, she had a unique role, and performed a function that set her apart from the rest. The oracle was believed to be the mouthpiece of Apollo himself, and she was known to deliver prophecies while in a trance-like state. The oracle would sit in a chamber within this sacred temple, surrounded by intoxicating vapors that rose from a chasm in the earth. It was believed that these vapors induced her trance state, allowing her to commune with the god Apollo and channel his wisdom and foresight. Kings, warriors, and common folk alike would travel vast distances to consult her, seeking answers to their questions about war, love, and life. What's even more interesting is that the Oracle's prophecies were often cryptic and open to interpretation. This added an element of mystery and intrigue to her predictions, leaving those who sought her wisdom to decipher the meanings behind her words. It was a blend of religion, mystery, and power, all encapsulated in one woman, the Oracle of Delphi. This intriguing figure from ancient Greece continues to captivate us. The idea of a single woman wielding such immense power and influence is a testament to the unexpected complexities of ancient societies. The Oracle of Delphi remains one of the most fascinating aspects of Greek history blending religion, mystery, and power. The Parthenon stands as a symbol of ancient Greece but did you know it has a tumultuous past? Constructed in the 5th century BC, the Parthenon was originally built as a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena. Over the centuries it served various roles from treasury to Christian church to Islamic mosque. However, one of its most dramatic transformations happened in the 17th century. In 1687 during the Venetian siege of Athens, the Parthenon found itself at the center of conflict. The Ottoman Empire, which controlled Athens at the time, chose to use this ancient edifice as a storage facility for gunpowder. It might seem like a strange choice but the reasoning was clear. They believed the Venetians would avoid damaging such an important cultural monument. However, war has a way of ignoring the rules of cultural preservation, and the Parthenon was no exception. A Venetian cannonball, aimed at the Acropolis, found its mark in the Parthenon. The result was catastrophic. The blast caused by the ignited gunpowder reduced the once majestic temple to a skeleton of its former self. The explosion was so powerful that it destroyed the central part of the building and brought down the Parthenon's iconic columns, scattering fragments across the Acropolis. This event marked a tragic chapter in the Parthenon's history, and it's a moment that dramatically altered the monument's appearance, turning it from a complete temple into the iconic ruin we recognize today. Despite the extensive damage, the Parthenon has withstood the test of time. Its ruined state serves as a stark reminder of the sometimes turbulent intersection of history, culture, and war. It's a testament to the resilience of this ancient monument, which remains standing, albeit scarred, a silent witness to the passage of time and the unfolding of history. The Parthenon's explosive history serves as a stark reminder of the trials this ancient monument has endured over the centuries.